Deutsche Bank is the latest Wall Street bank to tell its employees to be back in the office by the end of the summer, along with JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs. Indeed, here at Warner Media, we've started bringing more and more people back into the office. So now the question is, what's everybody going to wear? The U.S. clothing giant L.L. Bean is hoping to capitalize on a shift in trends with back to work attire in fashion. Now, after benefiting from a big booming casual wear, WFH working from home, now the company says customers are restocking wardrobes with more formal attire. Sales of items with buttons and zippers have surged. Stephen Smith is the chief executive of L.L. Bean. All right, Stephen. Back, so we had, you and I talked a lot about working from home and all that, but back to work fashion, how is it going to be reimagined, do you think? Yeah, uh, nice to see you again, Richard, and uh, yeah, happy summer to you soon. I'll tell you, actually, it's really interesting. There's sort of three complex dynamics right now. We're still seeing active apparel and gear and people getting outside, so, you know, stand-up paddle boards and bikes continue to be way ahead of 2020 and even 2019 levels. To your previous guest from Goodyear mentioning, we're definitely seeing people start to get ready to travel. So we're seeing swimwear, duffel bags, which typically indicate sort of weekend travel and driving, you know, beach tents, things like that as people are, are starting to venture out. And then for sure, people are starting to clean themselves up a bit. And whether it's returning to the office, going out to eat, going over to friends' houses. Um, and as you said, we've seen a fantastic pop of really simply things with buttons and zippers and men's polo shirts, men's chinos, but, denim. OK, but um, how, do, how do you create a new fashion for those going back to the office? If we accept that the future will not be like the past, uh, unless you're like me and wear pinstripes, which we've talked about before, but um, yes. how do you generate a new fashion that is more casual and more in tune with a post-pandemic employee. You know, there's a lot of little hidden technologies in casual and and and, and uh, work clothes right now. And I'd say people are dressing up, but they're not giving up on comfort because they've had comfort for the past 15 months with the clothing. So we are seeing our we're putting stretch into our Oxfords, stretch into our denim. Our chinos have stretched, so all of those, you can have a comfort waistband or you can have a little bit of, of stretch and flex. You know, your size may have changed a little bit through exactly. COVID, and, and that is allowing the clothes to be more comfortable, uh, more active if you're doing things, uh, but also um, allows you to look, you know, cleaned up and ready to go to work. And, Stephen, the, the competition is extraordinary uh, in apparel, but some didn't make it. So obviously, there were many who just couldn't make it. And this balance between bricks and mortar and online has been accelerated hugely. Yeah. Do you still see a major role for going out shopping in a bricks and mortar? We do. You know, and it's really interesting. You know, 2020, the, the brands like ours and many others that were omni-channel and had really big e-commerce uh, businesses, we fared well with able to, to flex channels from bricks and mortar to e-com. What we're seeing right now um, in 21, each month, um, store traffic is growing dramatically. And we are very close to our 2019 uh, bricks and mortar uh, store uh, sales numbers. And traffic is only down 11% from 2019. So... People are, they want to get out of their houses. Products that we sell, a lot of our gear and a lot of our performance products, people want to touch them. They want to feel them. Um, they've been isolated for, you know, for quite a long time. So we do still see a role for bricks and mortar. I think you have to be very efficient. You have to be very technology oriented so that you can meet a customer wherever they want to shop. But there absolutely is a role for bricks and mortar as well as e-com. We talked during the pandemic, um, I'm asking all CEOs, uh, this question, what did you learn about yourself and your management style? At the worst of it, when the money's going out faster than it's coming in, and it's existential in some cases, Stephen Smith, what did Stephen Smith learn about himself? Yeah, it's a great question. And, we, you know, we've talked a fair amount about sort of recapping the year. I'll give you, I mean, just for me personally, it happens to be an alliteration, but I found... Um, myself being uh, more decisive, more direct, and more deliberate. And what I mean by that was 
we as an executive team, we didn't have, we had imperfect data and we had urgency. And so we had to be incredibly decisive in the decisions that we needed to make in the moment. Mm -hmm. um, there was no time to, uh, right. to, you know, we had to be clear and direct in our communication with our employees. And then I'll tell you the big thing that I learned was energy management. Um, there were moments in July and August where I realized I could work 16 hours a day, seven days a week, and that was not going to be sustainable and became very deliberate about taking care of wow. my mental and physical health while also trying to lead the company. Great to talk to you. We'll talk more as the, as the year wears on and our summer wardrobe goes to winter and I see the latest in pinstripes. Thank you, sir. Good to see Fantastic. you. Fantastic. Thank you, Richard. Nice to see you. Thank you.